Hi there, thanks for listening. We are joined by MJ Morgan, owner of Widgeon Theatre Boat, for episode two of the Waterways Arts podcast. So hi MJ, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your background and also how you ended up getting a theatre boat? Well, my background is film. I'm a film producer, line producer, and started uh, quite a wee while ago. <laughs> um, probably about 30 years ago in fact learning from the bottom up um on music videos um as a runner getting into production and then producing music videos and that expanded into going into live outside broadcast filming and filming big known bands in their concert environment within venues abroad and over here within small venues and large um, stadiums, as well as award shows and doing commercials and documentaries. And then in the background, every year, definitely taking time off to go and hang out at Glastonbury. Mm. <laughs> and I was very, through friends, um, kindly introducing me into the theatre and circus field, literally about 27 years ago. I managed again just to kind of, you just help out. In those days, it was just like stick some pigtails in the ground and stuff some tape out and put your high vis on and protect people and literally everyone jumping in and volunteering and it kind of still is like that but it's the one big happy family mm. of generations of people now working but because of that I've been lucky enough to build some great friendships some long-lasting friendships both with colleagues and artists promote uh, performers theatre artists circus artists and stage manage now for them on one of what they call their riser stages which is probably uh before arabella churchill passed sadly um an inspiration of bringing the performers back to the street in a way to the field to the ground the risers ethos is that you know what a lot of um you know street performers love is the fact that they're with the crowd they're there they're with the people, um, they're kind of calling them in and then doing their performance. Mm. And I think because of the mud that sometimes happens, <laughs> these rises occur to give a safe space for technical side of things, but also for the performers. And it's kind of expanded from that. And it's now about five or six of them and I stage manage one of those. Um, so in a way, I very much was inspired by both my film work in outdoor environment, which I love, and the theatre and circus environment and being able to platform their work and I've lost track. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a fa it's a fascinating transition it's really interesting hearing you talk because I sort of originally asked you like how things went into you having Witch and Theatre Boat and everything you were saying about having the risers and having like the performer there in the audience is very much what I see Witch and doing and like bringing that spirit into yeah. performance. So it's, it's fascinating to hear you talk about that transition and just sort of reintroducing the kind of, I guess the well-being and, you know, the, the for want of a better word, the mental health of, of making performance and hosting performance in that way that is really kind of nurturing in a, in a sense because I, I know because I do production management and tour management as well it, it can be very very stressful and it, it absolutely burns people out and to do that in a way that embraces the community and embraces that feeling of having the performer right there is really exciting and interesting to me. Yeah and I think you've kind of reminded me thinking where I was going with my track, which was where has that got any connection to do with both? <laughs> <laughs> but what I found was a year being a Londoner, I'd always had this assumption, I have to say, that it would be very expensive to live on a boat. I also thought you had to have a mooring. And it's true to say that realistically, it's only been about 10 years. It's not been that long that people can continually cruise. Mm -hmm. um, so it is still quite a new thing. Um, and as I had been made aware of that, I was like, oh, actually this dream could be feasible. 
and went through the finance and saved and saved and thought actually yes i want to have a boat that i can live on when i'm over here i've got a base i can leave my stuff if any fellow film colleagues want a place to stay because also like myself they've chosen to move out of london for a better quality of life as well because in production as you know as you were saying it's very can be quite stressful um and so it's important to try and juggle that and make sure you have that fine balance that you've got a space you can breathe in to be able to come back into the chaos and then go away again and then come back into the chaos yeah um and i think we all live on that high as well you know it is quite um it is a bit of a roller coaster i think and boating life in a way i embraced because it sets another set of challenges but a good positive set of challenges as an individual you're going ah right okay i'm steering this thing on water how do i do that help <laughs> um and through having to ask for help and like oh god i'm in the middle of nowhere how do i get to shop i'm of the background um where we did talk to neighbors next door we did knock on doors i played in the streets you know we used to skateboard with the kids across the road the football yep i think over the time in london what i was one of the reasons in fact i moved away was i felt the community was disappearing and i really missed being a part of that community for me community is really important and being a part of it and I'm not somebody very good at sitting in the background <laughs> I'm in the community right I want to do something I want to bring something to this community I want to be involved in this community um how can I what can mm -hmm. I bring to this community that they can benefit from as well as myself how can I put my skills into um a way that benefits all of us not just me um mm. So while I was living on this boat and getting to know people in certain areas and moving around, I think eventually when I was coming into London for the first time, it took me about three years, maybe, I mean, nearly four before I even brought my boat into London, funnily enough. I was actually having to commute. I kind of did end up getting a mooring, but cost effectively outside London. Yeah. And I had to commute quite a large amount uh, back and forth into London which was frustrating to an extent because I was effectively, from my point of view, it was a bit like being abroad. I was still very far from friends and family, actually, because I wasn't, I was in the UK, but I wasn't actually near people I really knew, which was fine and had its own challenges and meant I met new people um, and in a way enforced that you've got to get to know a new community, which was fantastic. But um, from a practical point of view, the commute was long and tiring and you're already tired from production. So I definitely mm. felt, no, I need to get on with this and move the boat. So when I took the opportunity, I did. And as I did, I got to go to the boat festivals, recce festival, for example, and meet some of the guys on the traditional boats and these huge boats. And I'm seeing the lovely coal boats and I'm going, but that makes a great stage, doesn't it? <laughs> open and I can put boards across it and I could maybe even have two of them together and we can have a fantastic open air stage why haven't we done this why hasn't anyone done this oh I know I'll do this <laughs> um and one of the coal guys I'd been telling so when I first went to Ricky Festival this this whole concept was evolving in my head a lot and it was really you know bubbling up so I utilised the opportunity and spoke with existing boat traders um, and existing boaters who ran venues by the waterside as well and just threw the idea out there to see what people thought. Was it something that they thought? And obviously, and most people were really sweet, actually. were like, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's great. Go for it. And then one or two boaters were like, hang on, MJ. Is this going to make you any money? <laughs> That's just kind of boating generally. There's like everyone's really encouraging, and there's always a couple of like, oh. well, it's no, I have to say, you need those people because there is a reality there. You, I have an ethos that, um, as much as I've been incredibly lucky, especially when I came into London with Widgeon, um, 
and there was very much some key voters who offered a lot of time and energy to me for free. I do not, um, I, I do not like to feel that people are not paid. I think it's very important mm. that people are um, recompensed for their time and energy and as much as I know, and the problem I feel with art and theatre, um, it's so easy to get involved because you love it and you do. And I think that's very, it's very true. It's why we do it. We're passionate about it, but it isn't a hobby. It's a job. It's a lot of hours that go into it, a lot of energy. And I think it's very important to reward people, not just by letting them, you know, get involved and seeing the play and feeling a part, you know, they need to be um, recompensed with um, an earning as well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I think those people are important. No, no, no absolutely. <laughs> it is It is a real problem. And it is, it's so easy for people to get exploited. And it's so easy to kind of create that, which is part of the reason we wanted to set up a network of people. Um, obviously, people like you were very much individuals who have things covered. But we felt like it was quite important, especially for younger people coming into it, to have that support network and to have that possibility to collaborate and seek advice and to get a sense because it's so easy to end up in a situation where you're told that something will be good for exposure or that it will help benefit you in some way when I don't know I think it's it's useful to have people who have that attitude and I very much agree with you it's a full-time job it's stressful it's hugely rewarding but you do need to be compensated for the work that you do um, I think you do um, yeah and I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned as well, because like you say, um, I am an individual and um, it is so easy to try and do everything yourself for, especially partly because it's mm. your concept, it's organic, it's evolving, your ideas are changing. Um, and, you know maybe there's a fear of lose someone's going to run off with that idea which is has happened in the past in many parts of our industry but i think not just that it's just like you you don't want it to let it run away with itself but at the same time i think it's important to understand when it is important to let go and delegate and actually go no i need help i really need help now <laughs> i can't do this on my own um so no i think it's um i think it's wonderful what you guys you know that we have all managed to come together around a table and as we did a few years ago and then become a collective i think it's uh incredibly it provides a lot of strength again to that point that i was saying where we are a community yeah and i think um by joining the voting community it's been a huge privilege in that regards so i think we do i think there's so many amazing skills that can come to play. And, and actually that probably leads us into the lockdown because I think at the beginning of it, everyone was in such turmoil and in their own personal emotional space. But one thing I noticed very, very early on, even at, before even the official lockdown happened, uh, boat, boating communities were so prepared whatsapps groups were already created people were reaching out and going right we're going to be here you contact these people da, 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 da. and we'll get food source here if you need it we're key workers we're not and that was such a wonderful warming feeling that if yeah. as a person on my own if anything happened i could do i could reach out and i think um, and so sort of really puts for me the community up there in such a big way whether we have disagreements or um ne ne you know you're never going to get on with everyone that's something i learned a while uh, ages ago when i moved to spain you know you're going to reach out to the people that speak a similar language but it doesn't mean to say they're going to be your best friends but you will always look out for those people yeah. whether or not they're your best friends because at the end of the day we are human with you know we can help each other so yeah um you just have to draw from everyone's strengths. Yeah. I, I wanted to step back just because I think something you've done that I've been super impressed by, uh, which in Theatre Boat um, hosts live performance, obviously with the lockdown that hasn't been able to happen. And you adapted like that and produced 
<laughs> which in airwaves so the radio show can you talk to me a little bit about that and how that came about yeah um i think a lot of it's to do with my film background as soon as i mean i, I don't know about anyone else but essentially as soon as i saw or heard it on the news about this um pandemic or not they weren't saying it was a pandemic at that point um i was just like why haven't they shut the borders this is clear to me it's gonna it's gonna spread if it's a virus that's that catchy um so i think i started to become quite conscious that this could have an effect i don't think even i i, I just wasn't completely aware of how much of an effect it was going to have because i was actually working on a film shoot in february in a live venue so clearly i didn't um and my client was traveling back and forth from america but at the same time I think there was an element in the back of our heads and I was just like, if this happens, I'm going to have to find a way where I can film artists in a multi-camera format, which is what I'm used to working with, um, but through a digital internet setup. And if that's not possible, or if it, if it is possible, I think people are going to get inundated with looking at a screen because they're working from home, of which I'm used to, remotely and like even now as we're here we're sat here looking a very 2d information and uh we have what's called colorists in the film world where they're mm -hmm. sort of changing the tone of your footage once you've filmed it and i always remember uh Tarek, a guy i worked with years ago who was very cool you have to look away and look back at the screen you know you need to give these people um, different perspectives within their room and in fact it's something everyone should be aware of you know when you are looking at a screen a lot remember to look away remember to change your eye direction because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll find it very tiring and so on that note I thought what people can do and are always doing hopefully is listening or I for one wake up in the morning and like putting on my radio and seeing what's going on but I can do that and still be doing other things in my life yeah. so I was like there's an opportunity to keep the name out there um, still give artists a platform whether they're new or emerging um, or want to create something at least we have that opportunity we can still give perform as a platform and if I can build it and build it and get some form of sponsorship or donation coming in or subscription I haven't quite got there yet um I can start to pay these guys who haven't got any work um so I just thought it was really important and one of the first phone calls I made when we were getting close to lockdown was ringing my IT guy going right you've got to figure out how to do video integration and we've got to do a radio station ah <laughs> He's like, oh, oh. And he was in his own head spin as well, yeah. you know, and I think I underestimated how much of a head spin it was for all of us, um, in, including myself. I think the, the first month, my emotions were all over the place, but it gave me something to do. <laughs> it gave me some sort of structure that I could follow and look into and source and figure out how to platform it. Um, so yeah i have created a radio station <laughs> it's, which is live which is i mean live, it, it right is now. amazing and i happen to know that all your shows are archived and online and there will be a link in the description below to all of those and you should definitely check them out and have a listen yeah and if any artists are out there that have an idea or want to dj because they've never dj before I mean, this is the thing. I've got my mate in Spain. He's been DJing live, you know, and he jumped right in there. It's like got his microphone. His nephew over here has been DJing. One of the street performers from Glastonbury put forth his 18-year-old son and went, right, Louis will DJ. And Louis loved it, you know. So it's um, exactly that. It's kind of giving people who might not have otherwise had an opportunity to platform their work. And especially... If you're a bit nervous of going on stage or you're nervous of a big live audience it's in fact a perfect opportunity to get used to the sound of your voice get used to how slow you need to talk sometimes <laughs> <laughs> how slow so people can hear <laughs> It's amazing people don't quite hear. <laughs> I know. It's, that's been a, a real learning point for me as well. They've slowed down. Everything's slowed yeah. down. 
slow down. You don't need to rush. <laughs> got into this habit of um, fast editing, fast cutting. Um, pace is important. Um, give people a chance to breathe. And I think lockdown has definitely done that. I hope. Well, it doesn't sound like it from outside. <laughs> the A5's as busy as ever. But, um, yeah, no, so therefore... I'm kind of really pleased I've done it. I hope it continues. <laughs> yeah. I certainly hope it continues. But um, So what is the future for Widgen as we're starting to come out of lockdown? I know you've mentioned a couple of ideas. Yeah, I am. Um, so last year I had commissioned an idea of mine to, I had this idea that I wanted to create a play that I could take on tour with Widgeon Theatre Boat. And as um, if it was mine, then it would be easy and I could program and organize a tour. And then that gave me a motivation to where to go on tour and simplify things. And I probably was inspired a little bit by Micron and yourselves. And when we had that big meeting to think, right, really got to actually, if I do something like that, it will make it easier mm. for me, for structure, the future. Um, so I did, I commissioned a writer, we wrote The Grit of Life. We then had um, Rory McLeod, who's a known prolific folk punk troubadour singer, mm -hmm. who played at Glastonbury last year, for example, but he's been going a long time. He came on board and he's composed and lyrics done the music. And then we were about to go into production and lockdown. So... The Art Council have given me a small grant and that's now going into rehearsal for the next two weeks. And the Grit of Life will be live. We are hoping to do it to a live audience um, on the canal in rugby um, in August, mid-August probably. Um, dates will be released next week. Uh, and we will also live stream it so that hopefully people will buy tickets to watch online or if they don't get a chance to do that that they can then download it for a nominal fee and watch it um but it's giving performers a chance to work again so we are challenging ourselves that um <laughs> platform of how to rehearse internet through the internet digitally how to Wow, yeah. learn to do a show through the internet digitally musically with the best quality we can provide and then if everyone feels comfortable to go live to a live audience which will obviously be a fairly reduced capacity um but hopefully at least there'll be people there to give um the energy back to the, the performers as well um mm -hmm. so that's um in the present future and then going forward, I really hope to be able to gain funding to be uh, put a lot more energies in prom promoting the radio show and gaining more shows within that and programming some live music events as well. I'm a grassroots venue, so I really do want to continue being able to platform um, up and coming artists and emerging artists of all kinds. So, um, I'm in the process of trying to put together a program that's real um, that can potentially we can take either where I am, which is north, and up to Coventry, Birmingham, and round through Market Harbour and back down, um, and then into London. Or we do it live stream. Depends on what's happening, isn't it? <laughs> that's so exciting. It's really exciting, and I do love the fact that you've kind of just built in every possibility of <laughs> there'll be a way forward regardless there'll be a way forward um, it has to be. so I, I realized that i've kind of gone over time a little bit with you but i just kind of want to finish up by asking you what is why is it so important to you to be running a grassroots venue to be bringing audience what 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 drives that for you i get so much joy um and happiness out of seeing people and being a part of something that comes alive and I think that's something we're all sorely lacking right now as well um, mm. so there's no way I want to give up because I think that's so important um, and I also think that if we didn't have 
grassroots venues, um, how would artists start? What, what platforms would they use? Um, it's nerve wracking as it is, but when I first, you know, when I was in 18, 19, it was like, God, how do I get into theatre? How do I get into film? You know, where do I start? There wasn't really anyone advising me. And in those days, there really weren't very many grassroots venues either. Um, there were a few, obviously, in key ones. Um, but you really had to go, right, I've got to be part of Equity. I've got to be part of Spotlight. I've got to do a cruise ship performance to get a equity cards we can consider being a part of a show and the shows that were then in my mind available were the West End shows so it, it everything seemed quite um impossible in some ways without having done the correct drama course or the correct college course and I think through all the little stages and lorries that we've opened up and had bands play and over the last 30 years have evolved involved into kind of now huge events and festivals what that's done it's just given us an opportunity out there to such a wide variety of people it's given access to everybody rather than a very specific group of people i think it's enabling everybody to feel they can be a part of this and i think that's so important and what I can offer in my small way is to be able to invite the community we're a part of and say, you know, here's a platform, use it. <laughs> you know, why not? Um, let's invite people to, who aren't used to being by the water or might be slightly nervous of people who live off grid or who travel you know, it welcomes people to have a better understanding of how maybe to be more sustainable. Um, it welcomes people to come and enjoy themselves by the canal and in, can introduce them to the environment, the animals, the lifestyle. Um, but it also can give an opportunity to artists to platform on a small stage, showcasing their work to an audience that isn't thousands of people, but at the same time gives an opportunity to build credibility, build a review, test out their ideas to see what works, what doesn't work. Because I think it, it doesn't matter if you're well-known or not. I've had well-known people come in and test out new comedy shows before they go to Edinburgh, for example, for their previews, or um, musicians who've come up with a, you know, he did a Charles Manson uh, musical. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a bit weird but he did uh, yeah. and, but it was great because he could test it in front of a small audience and get very relevant feedback um uh puppetry for students in angel islington at the end of their school diploma were able to platform their work to pass us by and existing audiences and get a real feel for how it is to present a show to a real audience, not your, just your parents and your family, but to the public. Um, rock, rockabilly bands, um, musical singers, I've put in the boat and had them singing and they're like, oh, this is a different environment. Um, new artists for record companies in Camden during the um, Radio 6 festival in March, I just kind of like piggybacked it without the knowledge and called it Six Events Live and put a show on the and in fact Steve Mac was fantastic he was like he just laughed his head off and gave me a shout out because he thought it was good for you <laughs> um, and we had uh, some great little artists come and sing from various um, parts of Camden so it gave them an opportunity to test out the new songs so I think it's grassroots are important yeah 100%. if we don't have grassroots then it just becomes so much harder to express yourself through your art whatever whatever way that art is yeah. you know and for me the canal is um i think it's a shame it's not celebrated more when it's got such a historical significance on mm -hmm. how things um evolved a few hundred years ago and in fact it's such an integral part of our history from going from horses and carts traveling along 
bringing your supplies from one place to another to using the water internally not just from the sea but actually transporting the stuff from left to right east to west um and in a shame it's a shame we don't celebrate it more and within that the artistic culture of the roses and castles um, the songs that they've probably sung and built up stories so i hope my musical incorporates some of that um as well as highlighting the economical reasons <laughs> that people probably live on a boat now and i just think in itself it's there's that history too isn't there it was used before for car going and now yes people might see it as far more of a, a leisurable activity but actually i think what's interesting is it's becoming also a necessity for housing for the housing crisis and for people who can't afford to have their new home you know starters and i've been amazed to see how many people are having babies and um, you've got like babies on board haven't you the facebook page and so i think it's there's it, generating a whole new community out there which sets itself its own challenges but then therefore we need we need art within those communities. yeah no absolutely and, um... and get together so definitely so <laughs> hopefully people will want to get involved i tried to form a choir just before um lockdown the widgeon warblers, <laughs> the water warblers. <laughs> and we did get quite a lot of people turning up and um i think actually a boat and choir if we can get on with it again it'd be amazing i think that'd be fantastic that sounds I great be interested to hear it yeah, yeah. So. amazing yeah, thank you thank you so much mj i have massively run out of time uh thank you so much for joining me and thank you everyone for tuning in and we will be back introducing more people on the waterways arts podcast as the months progress thank you for having me